So your edit is supposed to be where your videos come to life, but sometimes that can be a lot easier said than done. Maybe you're already editing and you're looking to level up or you're just getting started. So in this video, I have an extremely simple four step method that will take you step by step from beginning to end to exactly how to edit your YouTube videos. And I promise to drop all my little tips and tricks that will help improve and speed up your workflow. So let's get right into it. All right, step number one is organizing and importing your footage. Once I'm done shooting a video, what I'll do is I'll import that footage straight from the card. Now for being good little boys and girls, what we really should do is create folders for all our different types of footage. Now to be honest with you, 90% of the times I don't do that because it's really just A roll, my audio track, and then some B-roll, I could figure things out as I go. So pop the memory card in. It gives me this window and thing right here. I come here. This will be how to film a YouTube video. And because it's the first time I'm bringing the files into the computer there, I will use copy to hard drive. Then I'll drop whatever other assets that I need into here, or I'll just add them as I go. And then one additional step that I have here is just syncing my audio with my video clip because I do record my audio externally. And this process is super simple here. All you have to do is select the clip, select the audio track, come up to clip, hit synchronize. You hit okay, you let it think, and then your track is synced there. And then the last thing we need to do in terms of getting organized there is create our project so we can have our timeline there. In creating my project, I will actually do custom because I want to do a two to one video ratio there. And that's just to give my videos a little bit wider aspect ratio there to take up more real estate, particularly on your smartphone. Hit OK and then you have your timeline there. Step number two is trimming out all of the mistakes. When I record these YouTube videos, I mess up a lot. Usually as I come through here and I'm looking at stuff here, I can actually see where the audio dips here. So that gives me a good idea of where to go to listen for the ums and the ahs and where it is that I made a mistake so I could make those cuts there. And this is where Final Cut Pro's magnetic timeline comes in so clutch there because it makes it so much easier to cut and delete and have everything just come together there. The other pro tip here on our keyboard shortcut is instead of coming in and making a cut and then making a selection and delete there, what I do that immensely speeds up my workflow here is if I want to cut and delete at the same time, if you hold option and do left bracket, it will just make the cut and the delete at the same time there. So that vastly speeds up the workflow for sure. And then, so I'll just go in there and just cut out all the ums, the mistakes, every place that I mess up there and chop down this video here a ton. So once I'm done here, usually what I end up with is this 38 minute video has now been cut down to anywhere between 12 and 15 minutes. This is where I take a little bit of a break come back and then watch the video in its entirety again because I also tend to ramble. But the rule is if I can make a cut and cut a clip out of the video and it still makes sense, then that clip has to go. So I go through and make another pass and that 15 minute video would then probably get cut down to about 12 minutes or even 10 minutes there. All right, one other pro tip there is when it is that you're going through and listening to the video for the second and third time. I will also usually go in and I use M to hit markers there on all the little key points. Any place that I want to make another particular edit for B-roll or anything else, titles where I'm gonna play stuff there, I will hit the M key. So that gives me a placeholder so I know exactly where I'm gonna place things in the video in the next step there. So the next step here is what I call spicing things up, putting a little seasoning, some of that salt there onto the video. But this is where you're adding all your titles, your text, your B-roll, your zoom in transitions, all that stuff there into the video. Now for most people you want to show and not tell, that makes the video a lot more visual appealing. So then you'd come in and you'd drop your B-roll over those markers in the places that you knew you were going to talk about anyway. So then once I'm done with my B-roll, the next thing is to start adding all my titles, all my little zoom-ins, all the call to actions there. And to do this, I use Motion VFX. Now Motion VFX is not sponsoring this video, however, I do have a link for you to get whatever deals that they do have going on at the time. For me, I use either their MTuber pack or I recently just got the MKBHD pack there as well. This is one of the best effects tools 
for Final Cut Pro, especially to spice up your video. So the first thing that I use here once it is that I have my edit here ready is the intro. And the thing I love about Motion VFX here is that everything is just drag and drop and super customizable for your channel there. So the way my videos normally start is that I'll talk for a few seconds to introduce what the video will be about and then I would drop this channel art here, which is just great for branding. So usually I drop a little solid there. And then the cool thing about it here is that you could drop your logo into it there. So pretty cool there that I didn't have to animate that, they didn't have to go into Apple Motion or anything. I can have that going there and you can add little text and stuff. And then another thing that I really like are these backgrounds. I will use these as transitions if I'm talking about something, as you've seen me here as I talk step by step here. So as I introduce, a particular step here, I could drop these onto what it is that I'm talking about there. And then I normally use these typography titles to create the text there. Docking those two there will give you nice cool animations there onto for what it is that you're talking about there. And then these call to actions are really great as well. Sometimes as YouTubers, we don't like stopping the video to ask people to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. By the way, please go ahead and do that for me if you're getting any value from this video. However, these little call to actions can just show up in the video there just to give people a reminder there. And again, these are drag and, drag and drop and customizable there. You could put them anywhere in the video there. This one is just that, or you have a couple of these here that I really like. And then you could drop your channel art onto it as well. It really gives the videos a nice particular touch there. A couple of the other ones that I really like, you know when us YouTube videos are trying to make that nice emphasis on a point, like when I say, and and it zooms in and then smoothly zooms back out here this makes that so much easier because again you just drag and drop it and then you have all these controls that are on how far you want it to zoom in here pretty cool stuff there as well so these can be really powerful there's so much more stuff in here to unlock this is just the way that i use them in these videos hit the link down below to go over to motion vfx there and check those out that is an affiliate link but that also helps me make more content like this here for you for free on the channel there all right once all the spice and everything is in there the next thing to spice up my videos here is that i add some music here i get my music from epidemic sound here epidemic sound is not sponsoring this video but click the link down below to get a 30-day free trial there as well i think they have some of the best music there in the game now the cool thing about epidemic sound is that you can download the stems there for the music but usually i don't need to do that to get too intricate with the edits for my music there what i normally do is listen to the track at the start there and whatever is for the intro for the track i will cut that up and repeat it for as long as it needs to be for my intro and then what I'll do is line it up there for where that intro of the graphic overlay is there for that first beat of the hit. And then I duplicate the music throughout the video. If the video is going to be a little bit longer, I might use some additional tracks there just to change the mood and switch it up there so it doesn't get too monotonous there. So the very last thing for me to do to my videos before I hit export here is for me to do my color grade here real quick. And this one's gonna seem extremely simple here. I use adjustment layers here. So I come in and I drop the adjustment layer over my entire clip there. And then are you ready? For the color grade, it's this simple. I drop that onto the timeline and I went from this to this. If you wanna see exactly how I set that up there, go ahead and click this video right here and I'll see you over there in the next one. Big up yourself. Peace.